The Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones who did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, Many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God, the Gospel of the Lord. As I said earlier, I am a visiting pastor. I work for the Des Moines Area Religious Council, and through my role I get to go to all kinds of different faith communities and share a message. And so as a Lutheran, I have the opportunity to worship with Methodists, Presbyterians, Episcopalians, the UCC, Disciples of Christ, pretty much anyone who will have me. I like to say that I am a professional stranger. And sometimes maybe my ways could seem a little strange to the communities I visit. And I have to admit that sometimes your ways are a little strange to me too. um, Because it's different. And as a Lutheran pastor, I don't usually choose my scriptures for preaching. You see, most Lutherans tend to preach whatever texts have been assigned for that Sunday through the Revised Common Lectionary, which is a three-year cycle of scriptures used by Protestant churches all over the world. So, all over the world this Sunday, churches are hearing and preaching on the same texts. So when I was invited to preach today here, and asked to preach on how to have difficult conversations, and asked to choose my scriptures, I chose the lectionary. If I have a choice, I almost always choose the lectionary. But it's more than me just being a stuffy Lutheran. I am aware that I live in a world in which we we choose the media we consume. We choose the social media streams that we swim in. We choose the people we live near. We choose the people we go to school with. And it seems really important in the church to be confronted with a word we weren't looking for, maybe did not want to hear, and then have to deal with it. No mute button, no blocking, no changing the channel. And I'm always surprised, year after year, how these ancient scriptures speak to the moment at hand. This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? In the moments before this passage, Jesus has been offending the crowd, telling them he must 
They must eat his flesh and drink his blood, saying it repeatedly, eight times in fact, using the Greek word trogo, that means messy, noisy, rude eating. A word that actually sounds like you're talking with your mouth full. He's not trying to avoid conflict. He is going there. He doesn't seem to be doing a lot of listening or trying to find common ground. There will be no agree to disagree, no both sides about any of this. And because of that, his disciples complain. Many of them turn back. He lost followers. So he turns to the twelve with a question that seems a lot more like a challenge. Do you also wish to go away? The disciples who hang there, hang around, are still with him. But there is a weariness in their response. Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. They are there because they know they have no other options. If you are hoping for the answers about how to have difficult conversations, that is, the techniques and the tips that will make these conversations less difficult, easier to have, I'm sorry. If you were thinking that maybe in scripture there is this one easy trick that will heal our divisions and bring people together, you won't find it here. If you are looking for a fix in this sermon to help us all agree and get along, I can't help you. Because following Jesus is choosing the difficult way. The word made flesh is scandal incarnate. It is an offense that God would stoop so low to be among us, to be us. And Jesus starts off his ministry in the Gospel of John, turning over tables and driving out the money changers in the temple, disrupting the economic system of the day and angering the folks who were profiting from it. He follows it up by making outlandish and offensive claims that he can rebuild that temple in three days. Then Jesus is talking at the well with the one person he should not have nothing to do with. A woman, an outcast, a foreigner, a pagan. Shortly after, he's healing the infirm on the Sabbath. The one day he's not supposed to, according to the law. It really seems like he's going out of his way to be difficult. Right before this passage, he's asking the disciples to do the impossible, the ridiculous. Feeding a multitude when they have nothing extra on hand to share. What's more, this multitude haven't done a thing to deserve it. They just showed up, hungry. And along with all of this, we will see the accusations, the escalating threats. More opponents will show up to criticize, to argue, and try to trap him. And it will get worse and worse, all the way to the cross. Do you also wish to go away? Honestly, I don't blame you if you feel like that sometimes. But when the words of eternal life have captured your heart and the body and blood abide in you and the peace of Christ, which knows no bounds, has reached you and in the following of Jesus, you have caught a glimpse of the kingdom, the new life that is possible, that is promised. What else are we going to do? There is no other choice. 
but to keep going in the difficult way that Jesus leads us on. But in these difficulties, we are not meant to be alone. We are to have difficult conversations with Jesus, and we are to have them together as a community. To practice living in the difficult way together. To hear together what Jesus is saying and discern what it means for us and keep listening when he is calling us to do the difficult thing, the painful thing, that thing we would rather not do. To speak the truth together when it is easier, so much easier, to stay quiet. To claim him together in the moments where it will cost us something. And to correct and to forgive and to welcome back one another when we complain or even when we have turned away. That's bound to happen to every single one of us at some point. Having a community does not make it less difficult. Sometimes the community is the difficult part. But having a community does not make it less difficult to follow this difficult Jesus, to trust in his difficult teaching, and live by his difficult way. But this community makes each of us stronger for the task. And for this moment, that is enough to keep going. Amen.